Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. This is part two of a video series. So if you haven't seen part one, uh, go ahead and check out the link in the description box below. But in this part, we are going to uh, do a pocket dump with the Late Boy Scout, uh, another YouTuber, a very successful YouTuber in, in our niche. So uh, be sure uh, to check out his channel, uh, his link. Uh, Fish Channel will be in the link, uh, in the description box down below. <laughs> you're, I'm Whatever sure, works. I'm sure you're better at this than, than I am. <laughs> Not much. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, guys, uh, so let's go ahead and look to see what the late Boy Scout has in his pockets. All right, let's check it out. All right, guys, so it's time for a pocket dump. We're here on Budget Bug Out's channel, and I'm going to show you what I keep in my pockets. This is today's uh, pocket dump, what I've got today. This stuff is some of the stuff I always have on me. Leatherman Squirt PS4. Man, I'll, I'll pretty much put this in my pajamas and walk around the house, no joke. I've got this with me pretty much all the time. It's so small, you can easily have that on you all the time. It's got great tools on it. You guys have seen this in my videos before. You've seen it in lots of other videos, I'm sure. It's just a fantastic little keychain multi-tool. And uh, I go hardly anywhere without it. So that's number one. A couple of other things I keep, pretty much always, is this right here, a Sharpie, a mini Sharpie. And I've carried this so much that it used to actually say Sharpie on it, but that's completely rubbed off. And it still works. Actually, this is the second one I've gone through, come to think of it. But I'll keep a pocket Sharpie in me, on me a lot, and I use it a lot, actually. Um, it's uh, surprising. It always kind of surprises me and surprises other folks when they're like, oh man, I wish we had some way to write names on all these plastic cups at this family party or whatever it is. And then I pull out a Sharpie and then we can do it. Or, you know, write a note on something that I couldn't use a pen or pencil for, and I got a pocket Sharpie and I can do it. Uh, so anyway, it's so easy to carry. They're inexpensive. You can buy a pack of them for, I don't know, a buck or something like that. And it's, I find it super handy. Lip balm I've also always got on me. And once again, this is something I have on me so frequently that the label wore off. It uh, wore to the point that I just had to peel it off. But uh, Burt's Bees Lip Balm is the bomb, in my opinion. I've tried lots of others. I've tried Chapstick, of course. And I just don't, I, don't, I, mean, I haven't enjoyed anything as much as I enjoy Burt's Bees. That's kind of a weird thing to say on an EDC channel or talking about gear, but lip balm, if it's good lip balm, you're gonna appreciate it. And I appreciate that stuff. Let's go with the wrist. I've got a paracord bracelet here. That varies by day. I have several of them. This one I've had for, I don't remember how many years I've, it's been since I made this one, but uh, I keep that on me a lot. And yeah, that's one of the things that usually goes with me when I leave the house. That's a Leatherman Tread. This is kind of new to my ADC. Leatherman actually gave this to me at SHOT Show. They invited me to their um, sort of release party for this tool, bracelet tool. And uh, at the end of that, they gave a handful of them out and I got one. So I'm fortunate and I kind of like wearing it for that point, uh, for that reason, but also it's very good looking, I think. It's really sweet looking. Everybody that sees it comments on it and says, man, that is cool, what is that? A lot of other folks I've had uh, look at it and say, yeah, that's dumb, I'd never buy that. I sympathize with both points, to be honest. I'll have a review coming out on, on this in the future. Uh, suffice it to say right now, I do see some usefulness from it. I also think that it's mainly for style. And those that are gonna buy it, are gonna buy it because they love the way it looks. Which is a perfectly fine reason to buy something. Uh, this watch right here is a Casio G-Shock. Which version of this? I think it's on the back. Uh, Riseman, or Riseman. This was actually given to me by my friend Gavco, who makes outstanding pocket knives that I cannot afford. <laughs> But they're great, they look amazing, and I wish I could buy one of his knives, and maybe I will one day. But uh, that guy is such a nice guy. He saw me mention on uh, Instagram that I'm looking for a good watch to tell my wife about to get me for Christmas. And he's like, give me your address, and he just sent me a watch. So again, really cool watch. I'm never gonna give it up because again, it came from a really good friend. Uh, moving on, I think that we got everything for the pockets for the most part, but we got a few things clipped here go first to this flashlight. This is the PF-01 from Forefire. This is a new flashlight I've been trying out. They actually sent me this one to try out. They sent me this and also the PF-02, which is the two AAA version of the same light. It's a little bigger than, say, your Streamlight MicroStream, 
and some other very, very small AAA flashlights. However, because of its size, you can palm that thing really nicely, and if you really had to, with that crenellated bezel, you could cause some damage holding it like this and striking, if you really had to. Hopefully you never do. It's got three modes on it, um, just low, medium, high. Works really well so, for me so far. The clip is good, good tactile, uh, clicky there on the, on, the, on the base. And anyway, I like it. So that's been my light. One of the lights I've been rotating in and using for a little while, and so far I like it. This is a tactical pen from Klee Zion, or Botash Tactical, as we also know them. Um, they, I don't know, I, I order from them from time to time, checking out different things they have, different deals they have, I'm on their mailing list. So this came up one day and it was a tactical pen for I think it was less than $20, might have been even 10 or 15. And it looked cool and the price looked really good so I wanted to try it out. If I remember right, this actually has the uh, Fisher Space Pen in it. Let's see if I can get that out and confirm that. Yeah, there it is. Fisher Space Pen. It's got a Fisher Space Pen refill in it. And again, to get that for around 20 bucks, you know, that's, that right there alone is pretty cool to get a Fisher Space Pen. If you don't know, that's the pressurized pen that will write upside down in any position and underwater, I think. So, so yeah, the coating on it looks like it's just paint, but it's been holding up fine. Uh, it does have O-rings on it, so that works pretty well too. Keeps the water out. A really nice sharp point on it. So if you actually had to use this in the tactical uh, sense, getting a hold of that like so, wrapping that around and actually having to do some defensive strikes with that, I could see a lot of damage happening. I mean, I could see some damage happening to this rock right here from this. Okay, I'm not gonna break this tip on, you know, by trying that out, but it would probably happen. And it's also got this nice flared uh, top to it that you can easily kind of grab and pull out of your pocket quickly, which is also a really neat feature. You can obviously thread a lanyard through there if you wanted to do that as well. The pocket clip, lastly, is very thick and robust. This is a problem that I've had on, I don't think I've actually had it on any tactical pens, but it can be a problem on knives and other things. If the pocket clip is weak, you have the tendency or you have the opportunity to bend that out, and then it's just not usable anymore, especially if you can't detach it, bend it back, and reattach it. So because this is actually so fat and so thick, I don't know, man, that's just really cool. I love how well-built this tactical pen is. So again, some of you guys think tactical pens are bogus, worthless, that's fine. I actually like that one quite a lot. The knife for today is the Spyderco Native 5 Lightweight in CPM S35VN. You can see the uh, bi-directional text texturing on that blade, or on the handle I should say, FRN. It's very light, pocket clip, rides not super deep, but it's pretty good. Uh, back lock as you can tell, big thumb hole to open. It's not super fast on deployment, but it's so light and very easy to use. Um, not threatening, not obtrusive. It's just a, a great little pocket knife and the steel on it, once again, that S35VN, I really wanted to get some experience, some time behind that steel. So far, I like it a lot. I think it performs really well and it actually sharpens a lot easier than I imagined it would. So I'm quite enjoying this knife all around and I think it's a, a very good, very good knife for Spyderco for the price, which again, I think is under $100, maybe around $100. Anyway, as a version of the Native, this is one that I've, it's pretty much got everything I wanted in the Spyderco Native, and that's the reason I kind of waited and got this one when I did. But that's the knife for today. We've got, I think, one last, no, a couple last things. I do use an iPhone. I'm currently an iPhone user. I'm not married to it, but, you know, it works. I actually have it on me all the time, but that's more because I do so much with Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and so on. So I'm, I've always got the phone on me, of course, but uh, yeah, again, the operating system is great, but I'm not necessarily married to it. Magpul case also works great to protect the phone. So I like that. That's the field case. There's also the executive case. Uh, the field case is the one that I prefer because it is a little bit thicker, a little more robust. The last thing I want to talk about, no wait, maybe two more things. We also got to go to the back pockets. There's my bandana. Keep that handy pretty much all the time. I think it's due for a wash actually. But I've always got that handy. That's, again, it slips in the back pocket so easily. It takes up no space. So why not have it all the time? So I do. 
There's my wallet. This is actually the Spec Ops Recon wallet. Let me see if there's anything personal in here that I can't show you. Not really. But that's the wallet. It's uh, nylon and it's got windows on both sides and works great. It's kind of replaced my Maxpedition Micro Wallet. I think both are great wallets, but I've enjoyed the, uh, the Spec Ops MRW Mini Reversible Wallet. It's also very good. Now I think we are down to the last thing, or second to last thing. Spare Magazine, eight rounds in it with Hornady Critical Defense, or possibly Critical Duty, plus P's. Set that over here. And that goes to this right here, which is the Smith & Wesson MP9 Shield in a Carden holster. Joe Carden is a buddy of mine. If he weren't a buddy of mine, I would still buy holsters from him because his work is fantastic. And after having tried it, I just can't hardly use anything else with as much enthusiasm. There are definitely other great holsters out there. If you prefer Kydex, then obviously this one's not going to be for you. But if you just want great comfort without sacrificing any durability or retainability, and let's just show that, that ain't shaking out, guys. That's not going anywhere. That gun retains very well in that leather holster, and it's extremely comfortable. I'll pull it out briefly. Extremely comfortable and works just great. I love the Cardin holster. I love the M&P9. It's become my, my go-to EDC gun. Um, it has replaced my Car CM9, which is also a very good gun, but I find that this one is easier to shoot, easier to get on target with, easier to be accurate with, and in my case, I can carry it all day long just as easily. So there you go guys, that is my pocket dump. That is everything I'm carrying today and everything that I typically carry. If I don't carry these exact items, I carry a lot of things that are very similar to them. The knife obviously changes out to various different ones because I rotate through knives and review knives. The flashlight does rotate out to different, knife or different flashlights. I've used lots of different tactical pens. And uh, again, the paracord swaps out for different ones that I feel like wearing on the day. But a lot of these things are core to my EDC system. And uh, that's basically the pocket dump. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate uh, uh, Late Boy Scout for, for coming on. Thank, thank you so much my for, pleasure. For, for spending this time and, uh, and showing us what you have in your pockets and, and answering my, uh, my, my silly questions uh, <laughs> in, in part one. Uh, his, links for his channel will be in the description box uh, down below, so be sure you check it out. Um, he also does, in addition to uh, similar content as me, he also does uh, gun reviews. And uh, So for those of you who are like, man, budget bug, I wish you would review gun stuff, head over to his channel. He's got all that covered, so that way I, 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 I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So, so he'll take, take it from there. So, cool. so check out his channel. Uh, thanks again so much, so much for, for having me out there out here in this beautiful uh, country. Yeah, anytime I can make it out here, I'm happy to do it. It's great to meet you too. Yes, thank you so much. All right. Anyways, guys, uh, stay tuned for, for, for more greatness uh, for my adventure in Utah. Thank you. See ya.